Good morning. Good morning. I love how we have the Valentines together. Aww. We may have a more important countdown going on right now than Christmas, and that is there's 11 days until Valentine's Day. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we have Ron and Hermione together, you'll be alerted to it. The only problem with these mugs is the fact that my mouth is way bigger than the, the head hole. No, but when you're filming videos, it doesn't really matter if you're not filming videos, but when you're filming videos, we want you guys to see the front of our yeah, mugs. because they're super cute. And the face is only on one side. Oh, because they're carrying it through to the back. Right. But as a lefty, you would normally have the mug on that side. Oh, to hold like it. This, yeah. But and that you means see you my have to stick. now drink your coffee. Good morning, Good Charity. Good morning, Charity. Uh, you have to drink your coffee with your right hand now. Well, I am used to being a lefty in a righty world. Let's be <laughs> let's be honest. This is a righty world. I'm a lefty. And there's actually a lot of stuff that I don't do lefty because my mom who is a righty could not show me how to do it like i cut with my right hand i golf i noticed with my that right when hand. you went to top golf with the church staff you were golfing righty i will sometimes overhand throw more with my left hand but i underhand throw with my right hand neither one's very good i can never turn on the faucet correctly first <laughs> hey <laughs> Took you a little while I to get that I didn't even notice one. the dig. It's interesting though, because I remember when uh, the boys were born, you think about like what our generation did. Like it was, it was really almost like a negative thing for you to be yeah. a lefty, right? Like discourage if and, you're lefty. And I remember people noticing John Paul like using his left hand for things. And he is a righty. But I remember getting advice from people being like, you really should be tying his left hand behind his back to force him to use right. Like, wow. like tying your hand behind your back is going to force your brain to operate differently. Maybe it'll help you to build up those muscles, but let's face it, we're right-brained or left-brained, and that's what it comes down to. Really, that wasn't going to work. I think we were really just building the therapy bill with that, right? Like, <laughs> hey, as a young person, my, my mom or dad like tied my hands behind my back and that made me trust them more, obviously. <laughs> I know, right? Let us know down in the comments section, are you a lefty who does a lot of things right-handed because we live in a right-handed world where most things are made for righties? It's not right, but I mean, it is what it is. Right? Well, it, maybe that's what they thought, that th this seems right, <laughs> righty. <laughs> So I noticed when I was um, filming our food yesterday, like what I was cooking, mm -hmm. and I was looking in the camera, I scratched my nose. I have no idea what I did. I was going to say something, but we've been practicing Frisbee with Tabitha, and I wasn't sure that you didn't have a like knock yourself in the face moment that I don't you didn't know. want to talk about. It could be from uh, horse playing with the dogs. It could be from a cat. Maybe it's from you. I don't know. Oh, uh, do I ninja in my sleep? Is that it? I, I just don't know what I did. I just noticed it and I'm like, what the heck did I do now? Like every time you guys see me, there's another cut on my face or He somewhere. fell down the stairs. No. <laughs> uh, so we have breakfast here. Breakfast. I still have some corned beef left over. And uh, so I'm having two and a half eggs with some corned beef. I got, I'm all about the chorizo. Two and a half eggs with chorizo. Anthony and I stopped at Costco yesterday did to you get, get those some more? towels. No, so the other, Costco is so weird, right? We have five Costco's within 10 miles of our house, and I know that's insane, right? 
but they all carry different things. Right. So I went to the one on Sample Road yesterday. Did they have any they more of the color? They don't have the chorizo. Did they they, that towels that we got? I got the towels. But not the same color. But No, but they had that color, but oh, I wanted a different, different color. One. I okay. like having different colors. We are not a matchy match family. Clearly. Like you don't go into our bathroom and everything Ooh, matches. I would, no one ever comes in our house and was is like, man, Pinterest should really get a hold of this place because this is like amazing how you decorate We are all about what's on sale like look, functional look at our we live bed. in the house every pillowcase is a different pillowcase the top sheet does not match the bottom sheet the blanket is from like six sheet sets ago i mean it's whatever is on sale I'm then missing, we can take that money and put it into beef i am missing the uh decorator jean <laughs> i would love it and i admire it i love going into a house and everything is like perfectly themed and matchy matchy wait a second you are really good at decorating we're just very thrifty and we don't want to spend the money on what it takes to do the decorating that you want. Well, like, look at what you always do over the kitchen counter cabinets and stuff. Well, my thing is the things I like to decorate are themed out to like party type themes. Right. So like, you don't want to have your house dressed like a circus or like, you know, hey, it's, we're doing a jungle theme. So like, yeah. Okay, so that's that's breakfast. Two and a half eggs for Rachel with the chorizo, which unfortunately didn't have anymore. But I did get you hard boiled eggs for your trip tomorrow. Thank you. And I got you some meat sticks for your trip tomorrow. Thank you. So that we you shall have enjoy all that. those. Uh, coffee is the entire pot. Two eggs, two tablespoons of butter. Uh, so no keto chow. And uh, look what I got. There has been an ongoing discussion about the fact that. Nobody thinks that Tabitha is a purebred, but all no. of her AKC papers say she is. Say she is, and we think there's a horse in there. We really do. Well, here's the thing: the average Labrador weighs seventy pounds. Tabitha weighs one hundred and thirty pounds. And even if you let's just say we exercise her her fanny off and she loses thirty pounds, that would still be a hundred pounds. Yeah. So she could never be. Well, her, her registration is one of those limited registrations, so you can't yeah. read them. So she could never actually show up in one of those, like, best of breed kind of shows. She could do competitions, but she wouldn't be allowed to anyway because she's 70 pounds over the limit for an AKC show. Well, and we... We waited a really long time to have her um, fixed. Right. Because they we waited said... waited after the first heat. Because the vet had said that... A lot of times you need to let them fully develop. And we're yeah. like, did we go a did month we go too, too far? <laughs> so yeah, we picked up one of these on Amazon. I'll, I'll leave a link for it down below. Now this is not the one that's looking for like genetic defects. This is just... What like, is this thing what, I have in like, front of me? What breeds are in her? Because right. I am convinced that I think somewhere there's... in her line... She may be from two Labrador parents, right? but I really believe somewhere in her line, there's like some Newfoundland or something like that. Right. Which is like the original way that yeah. they started, you know, breeding to get a, la a Labrador. But she's like the size of them, but she doesn't have their traits, which mm -hmm. is kind of interesting. But she's really enjoying playing Frisbee and catch. We're going to take her to the dog park later because we did finally get that chance to go down and renew her rabies because, you know, with, with, you know, the COVID stuff, everything was getting closed down. Yeah. And now we've got our dog park with our little key tag. So we're going to take her up there and then she is loving, I got to, she's waiting over there. Yeah. She's patiently. loving this stuff. We usually do use origin, yep. all their food line because this is, it's well, really good. We got her, um, I don't even remember the brand now. I think it was Merrick. We got her a bunch of Merrick. We yeah. got four big, like 28 pound bags of Merrick. Because, and it's all it like the sale. freeze dried. It's a really, really, yeah. really good food. No grains. And we, but I had, when we got Tabitha, I did this whole spreadsheet over how much is it going to cost to feed her. I mean, he looked like a Based on nut. nutrients. Like, I mean, you talk about, you know, Chris being nerd, nerd, nerd. I nerded this thing out. Right. And I broke it down. Like, what is it going to cost using the best possible foods? And Origin, which is expensive at about $90 a bag, Turned out to be the cheapest because it was, we talk about like even when you eat keto, right? Nutrient density. Nutrient density. And so, you know, people will say, well, keto is expensive to eat. Eating carnivore is expensive to eat. 
But if you break down nutrient density, where will you get the most amount of nutrients for your money? That would be like eggs and beef. Right. It's if you break it down to get all of your nutrients, that is going to be the cheapest way to eat. So I broke this whole thing down. And even though the origin was like over $90 a bag, it was cheaper to feed her that per day because you needed to feed her less. Whereas like puppy chow, which was a quarter of the cost of origin, you had to give her like eight cups a day. So when you broke it down, it cost more money to feed her puppy chow that you could buy in Walmart than it was to buy this really ex exclusive stuff. The, and American Akana were on the top of the list for nutrient density, but you had to feed them a lot. Yes. And so I didn't choose those, but that that store that we went into was having a clearance and then they had four bags where the best by date is like the end of March and April. So She'll like, finish it by then. I'm buying all of those. We haven't put away. And then they had a bunch of these. These are the freeze dried. So it's kind of like feeding raw. Mm -hmm. And we're giving her a little bit of this each day. And she is just loving it. It's also great for treats. Like just when we're, we're training with her, giving her little pieces of it. And she's loving having this stuff. It's been nice to see the investment like pay dividends, really. Because we invested in food instead of investing initially like in a big vet program for mm -hmm. her. Yep. And other than her being allergic to plastic, which I don't think that there's anything that we could have done yeah. differently. And it's not even an allergy to plastic. It's what happens is you give them a plastic food bowl. Yeah. And, it, and then the bacteria builds up on that plastic. And then she was losing her hair around her so face. She has so they a, said, don't do that. Feed her in stainless steel or just on, on the, the ground. On the ground. And so she, so aside from that, and the fact that she also. She's allergic to fleas. Has an allergic reaction to fleas, which I don't, again, I don't think that there's anything that we could have done differently about that. We give her a good flea medication. But as far as her overall health goes, we never take her to the doctor unless she needs her shots. Nope. That's she's, it. She's really had to have. Four years One of... One vet visit in four years, and that was all of her hair was falling out. Because of the... And then we, that's when we yeah. found out she is allergic to fleas. And I'm like, but One she doesn't flea. have any fleas. And the vet actually said to us, like, listen, when they don't have fleas, but you see flea bites, that's how you know they're allergic to fleas, because they do everything to get them off. Yeah. Now, I don't know how true that is, but it made sense that she had to get them off. But you and could never second, see anything. We ended up putting her on Bravacto. Yeah. And it works great. So they were like, don't ever use those topicals. They wash off. They don't work well. I have a really high sensitivity to them. You don't really like them anyway. So they we started her on Bravacto, which is just like a little like um, edible thing that she takes every couple of months. Never had a problem since. Her coat is beautiful. But I'm curious. We're going to send this DNA test in. It takes, I think, up to 30 days. Let us know in the comments. section. What do you think's in there? What is your guess? Yeah. What is your guess of how much lab compared to what, what do you think is What's in there the that thing? is making her so, so large? Because every trait she has is a Labrador. Yeah, it is. Loves water affection. All of that is but those Labrador. Are, but those are Newfoundland traits also. Yeah. Well, I'm curious to say, uh, before we finish eating and move on. Do you want to try the other Kai's Key yes. cookie? We didn't try this one yesterday. I won't dunk it first. I'll give it a, a first try so on this, its own. If you saw the vlog that we did yesterday, I'll leave a link for it up here. Kai's Bakery, which uh, we they had sponsored one of the 12 days of keto. We were really appreciative. And uh, owned by a little girl. And I love family awesome. business. And, awesome business um, owner. They had two new flavors inspired by Girl Scout cookies. Are you fighting that wrapper? Well, because it's kind of chocolate in there. And I took I had it in the refrigerator, so it's kind of melty a little bit. And um, this is, for at least in Florida, this is Girl Scout time right now. It really is. All the girls are out with Girl Scout cookies. And listen, I love the Girl Scout I cookies. Will just, and we like supporting the Girl Scouts. We I just, just hand them money. Well, I just hand them money now. Oh, yeah. And just like keep the cookies. So this is supposed to be her um, version of uh, the Thin, thin mint. mint. When dunk it? Oh, my gosh. That smells Thanks. delicious. Mmm. Okay. It's chewy versus... You know, a Thin Mint is usually like a, just a crunch. I would buy these. I yeah. mean, that's first of all. But. I like the ones from yesterday too. I like the, the Samoas were Okay, amazing. now I'm dunking. So I like these. They taste delicious. I would absolutely buy some more. Mm. But they're not the Thin Mint crunch. They're the Thin Mint flavor. flavor. So she's got, she nailed the flavor of Thin Mint. Yeah. 
but it's more of like a cakey cookie inside. Yeah. So it's like the Thin Mint, like cookie, but not texture inside. And then the chocolate outside, she's nailed. But it's absolutely the flavor of Thin Mints. Mm -hmm. And, um, but the Samoas, I felt like also had the, 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 the mouthfeel. Yeah. No, the yeah. Samoas were like dead, dead on. on texture, taste, this everything. Is dead on flavor. But I'm a mint person. Mm -hmm. High key mint cookies. Absolutely love them. The the chocolate ball Balls. truffles yeah. that Michelle made the recipe for, oh my gosh, love those. So for me, I'm a mint person. I like mint chocolate, like keto chow mint chocolate, love that. Anything with mint in it, I just like, that's my, my thing. I like the Samoa's type flavor and I'm always peanut butter girl. Usually like I head towards peanut butter. So while Tabitha holds the floor down, I wanted to show you guys some new sheets that we got. If you have been watching our channel for any length of time, you know that we are not matchy matchy when it comes to sheets. You are never gonna find our home in House Beautiful. But I did find these at Costco. It was 15 bucks for the entire king size sheet set. And that actually included four pillowcases. And I thought, what a deal. So I'm not really a big fan of these 80 degree temperatures at the first week of February, but the chickens are sure enjoying it because this is the third day in a row that we got six eggs from six chickens. What in the world are you making? Tonight, we are making jambalaya because you said you wanted shrimp. I did. And I don't want just plain shrimp. So we're gonna make jambalaya with shrimp, chicken and uh, andouille sausage. And I've always loved jambalaya, like pre-keto, jambalaya was my jam. You would go to a restaurant, want it over pasta or rice. Uh, now we don't do rice, but what we're making is Steve from Serious Keto's, the chicken noodle. So this is like, you know, the, the keto Asian flavors pasta, but he did it with canned chicken. And I figured what a better use of canned chicken pasta than in a jambalaya that has chicken in it. So I'm gonna leave a link for Steve's video right up here, recipes down below, cause it's not ours. I'm not gonna bother showing you how to make it. You need some certain ingredients, but we have them all. And so I'm preparing that part before I run out to the store. Time to start cooking dinner. So let's go over everything you're gonna need to make this. Let's start off with the protein. We're gonna need a pound of ground chicken, uh, a pound of pre-cooked shrimp. Now, I don't have any pre-cooked. I have ready to cook. These are already peeled and deveined, so that's what I'm gonna use. I like to buy wild caught. I get these at Costco, so I have them cooking right now. We need some andouille sausage. This is the one that my local grocery store carries, so that's what I'm using. But you can use any andouille sausage you want. Uh, moving on to the spices, we're gonna obviously need some Redmond Real Salt. We need a teaspoon of minced garlic or like one and a half garlic cloves. Two tablespoons of Creole seasoning. You're gonna need a teaspoon of tomato paste and a half a teaspoon of thyme. Then uh, we're gonna need a quarter of a cup of butter. We're gonna need two to three green peppers depending on how big yours are. Uh, and then we're gonna dice them up. I've already done that. And then you're gonna need a quarter of a yellow onion. And then finally, we're going to need a cup of chicken bone broth. So we're gonna start off with cooking our chicken. So we need to get our pan hot. And then I'm gonna put just a little bit of bacon grease. You can use any fat source you want. I just want something uh, to cook the chicken in. So now that our pan is hot, we're gonna go ahead and just put our ground chicken in here. You could actually use cut up chicken if you want. Uh, I just prefer to use ground chicken. I want it to have more of that uh, ground meat texture. One thing to note when you're cooking in a Teflon coated pan, don't cook on high heat. High, a Teflon does not like high heat. Now what I like to do when I do this is I wanna have big chunks, so I don't wanna break it up too much. So I'm gonna let it cook down a little bit and then I'll break it up a little bit more. While the chicken is cooking, we're gonna go ahead and start preparing our sausage. Just gonna take all four of these out. And uh, we're gonna use about a pound, so whatever's in this package. And if there is a protein that you don't like, you don't have to use it. I mean, but typically this is what a jambalaya is gonna have. It's gonna have chicken, andouille sausage, as well as shrimp. Now these are already cooked, so we just have to cut them up and then they're basically gonna get heated up in the pan. So what we're gonna do is slice them in half and then we're just gonna cut them into pieces. And you can make these pieces as small as you want. I like to have 
different sizes, so some of them I'm gonna cut more than others. And that's pretty good right there. Moving back over to our chicken. Again, it's poultry, it's gonna cook very quickly. And we're just trying to get a complete cook on it. Okay, once our chicken is cooked, we're gonna just remove it all, put it off to the side in a bowl or something. And now we're going to go ahead and heat up our sausage. If your andouille sausage is not pre-cooked, you'll have to go ahead and cook it here. For me, I'm just gonna warm it up. Okay, now that our sausage is warmed up or cooked, we're gonna go ahead and put that off to the side. And I'm gonna just use the same pan. I wanna get all the flavors that are in there. We're gonna go ahead and add in a quarter of a cup of butter. So it's a half a stick if you're using standard sticks. And we're gonna add two to three diced up green peppers and a quarter of a yellow onion. And again, you can use as much or as little as you want. I prefer to use green peppers because green peppers have a lot less sugar than the yellow and the red. But if you want to put a little bit of yellow or red in there for color, be my guest. So once our veggies are soft and the onions are translucent, we're going to go ahead and add a teaspoon of tomato paste and all of our seasonings. So we have a half a teaspoon of ground thyme, two tablespoons of Creole seasoning, and a teaspoon of minced garlic. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a mix in. And you can add more seasoning if you want a bigger punch. Uh, two tablespoons is gonna give this a nice kick, but not too spicy. We're also gonna add in a teaspoon of Redmond Real Salt. Mix that in. And now we're gonna add a cup of chicken bone broth, which I think I forgot to mention is something that we need. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna simmer this for a little while and uh, let all those flavors infuse. So now that we have all that in there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add all of our protein back in. So this is the shrimp, the chicken, and the andouille sausage. We're gonna mix all of this together now this is not an overly saucy uh, jambalaya because again, we're not using a lot of tomato just because uh, tomato brings a lot of carbs, but it is jam packed full of flavor and you have a lot of protein in here. So we're gonna go ahead and cover this up and let it simmer for about 10 minutes. Okay, so this has been simmering for a while. At this point, we have a couple of options. You can either add your pasta in here, or you can do what I like to do, which is remove as much of this protein as possible, and then simmer your noodles in this sauce to have the noodles absorb some of this flavor. And uh, then we're gonna serve it over the noodles. And I like to do that because I like to serve the protein over the top of the noodles instead of having it all mixed in together, especially if you're trying to divide it among everybody. So now that we have everything removed, we're gonna go ahead and add our noodles in here. And these are, again are Steve from Serious Keto's chicken noodles. You can use any kind of noodle you want or you don't have to use any noodles if you don't want to. Uh, these are the ones with the chicken. You can also use like shirataki noodles or shirataki rice. You could even put this over the top of cauliflower rice, but I prefer this since this is virtually no carbs. This is literally just ground up chicken with a little bit of xanthan gum. So we're gonna let this heat up and then we're gonna plate it. <sighs> wow. This does not look like any ordinary meal. It looks delicious. Yeah. It smells delicious. And I have to tell you, super impressed with Steve's chicken noodles. I am so excited to try this because ever since he came up with it, I'm like been wanting to try, but we just haven't taken the time to make it. Well, them. he released the video when we were doing beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, and then we had the holidays, and then we started beef, butter, bacon, and eggs again. Yeah. So go ahead. Now, obviously, I, I, I warmed them up in like the sauce, but I tried them without the sauce, and there's not really a chicken flavor. But the texture is like really good. They're not mm. slimy like shirataki noodles. No, but gosh. Wow. The flavor of like the sauce getting in there. Is that not good? It is so nice. Now, 
As far as the noodles, I, my squeeze bottle is very thin, so these are almost, my noodles came out almost like angel hair pasta. The texture's not slimy, but it's not al dente either. Right. So it, it's kind of like that cooked pasta noodle. Yeah. But I love having it this way. How easy was it to make? They're very easy. You just need to have, you know, the the ingredients from Modernist Pantry. I'm going to leave a link for them down below. But again, I did not put in here how to make it. It's a super simple process. This has a nice spice to it. You just have to actually, like, you know, do the mixing of the water. Just like we did when we Take made Christie's Keto Chow once. But overall, I mean, making the noodles was like five minutes. The mm. worst part was just waiting for everything. And this is a really good dish if you don't have a lot of time because cooking wise, this is very quick. This is not like one of those you need to cook for six hours. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's like 15, 20 minutes of cooking for this whole meal. And you don't even have to serve this over cauliflower rice or noodles. I just, for me, jambalaya should be served over rice. I much prefer these noodles over cauliflower rice. I'm not a huge cauliflower rice fan. I'm just not. I don't need it to do other things. I don't mind cauliflower, but it can just be cauliflower. I don't need it to be all these different things, but gosh. You can serve this without any of that. You can actually yeah. make a big batch of this as a meal prep. I would love and that. And this is really high in protein. Mm. Perfect for winter time, right? Because mm -hmm. it's so hearty and warm. It's got a lot of flavor in it. It's not overly spicy. It's got a kick. But it's got a little bit of kick. But you can dial that back. You, you can want. dial it back with the amount of Creole seasoning you put in there. But again, yeah. for me, jambalaya should be should spicy. Be spicy. Now, if you're curious, um, I will put them up on the screen because I don't remember exactly. But this, I have this. If you put it, we have the wet recipe is linked down below. And uh, we also have it in chronometer. So if you have a gold chronometer membership and you friend requested two crazy ketos at gmail.com, mm -hmm. all you have to do is type in keto jambalaya dash 2kk and it'll show up. I divided it into uh, four servings, although this is basically everything. So yeah. for us, it's two servings. But this is also pretty much, you know, the only thing we had our eggs what this morning, but today. this is the bulk of our, our food for the day. So if you're curious, based on four servings, and this is gonna be dependent on how big are your green peppers, how much tomato paste you use, and that kind of stuff, what, where you get your andouille sausage from. We use, what is it, the Adeli's one. We got, I got them at Publix, but they also sell them at like Costco and that I kind of stuff. I love that sausage. So um, this is roughly, if you divide it into four servings, 440 calories. 60 grams of protein. So you want to know, how do I get my protein? This way. You eat a half of this whole thing, that's 120 grams of protein. It's also, if I remember right, somewhere around like 25 grams of fat. Again, I'm going to put the exact things down below. It's about 5.8 total carbs, which is coming from the spices yeah. and from the green pepper and a little bit of onion. Oh, so and, good. But it's got like 1.7 grams of fiber. So this is... Perfect keto food. You got more protein than fat. Now you can add some fat if you're going to have fat in your coffee or something like that. And by the end of the day, you're one to one. Every meal doesn't have to be one to one. You you want to average out at the end of the day where you're close to one to one or having a little bit less fat. So this is perfect. And it's got all different kinds of protein and stuff in this there. This is so hearty and delicious. I mean, the flavor is so amazing. This is one of those meals that you point somebody to when they're like, isn't keto boring? Or don't I have to abandon some of my favorite recipes, soups, stews? No. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. Mm. And again, I love it with the noodles. Me too. And the noodles, I don't have the noodles factored into the macros. Because again, you may or may not want to use them. Right. But your noodles... They're essentially zero carb right? because it's chicken. He's using ground chicken or what you're using is a can of chicken and then you're putting it with water in your Vitamix or in your blender and pureeing it until it's yeah. water. But that's all it is. It's, it's just adding more protein to your meal. So mm. super, super happy with the way this came out. Again, the link for the Thank recipe you, is Steve, down below. for the noodles. I, I'm, I'm thrilled. I plan on... I'm cutting off the tip of my thing so I can get a thicker noodle mm -hmm. and making a bunch up. And he said they're good in the refrigerator for about five to seven days. 
Because, you know, I know he recently even Do put they up last a that long? carbonara recipe because, again, that's another thing that I've always loved is carbonara. Yeah. So that would be a fun thing to make. You know, I you know I just got to go find some place around here that has pancetta. That's how I always made carbonara. And one of the reasons I never made carbonara pre-keto, super fatty. Right. Right. It's made with eggs and cream, but, but all stuff that's great on keto. Exactly. So uh, we're going to finish eating. I know this is a little bit shorter vlog. Some people will probably like that. Uh, but we um, do have a live stream tonight. Mm -hmm. And so I need to go prepare for the live stream and I want to enjoy this. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, I used ground chicken, uh, but you don't have to use ground chicken. You could use cut up chicken breast. Oh yeah. Um, it's just, I had ground chicken, but also I like ground chicken with this because since it's so cut up, it's going to really absorb all those flavors as opposed to having just diced up chicken. Agreed. But you can use either one. So if you like seeing videos like this, do us a favor, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we have jambalaya, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time, bye. bye.